So the first one um, was mentioned to me by a subscriber. It's not something I've done before, but I do really, really like the idea of it. Now, many of you will have seen on the small diamond paintings, I do like to work with either these little containers that are connected into four, or recently I used the little individual pots when I did my June waffle. But if any of you have experienced using these before, sometimes, especially when you first get them, you will find that some are this way round and some are that way round. And, you know, they'll be all different ways round and you'll go and put all your stickers on and then you'll pick it up and you'll go, ah, oh, it needs to be that way. So this is a tip that a subscriber gave me. And what they have done is they have got a sharpie or a marker or something theirs was red and they have just colored in the hinge of the storage let me try and get hold of it the right way so that i'm not hitting it all the time when i'm so what i'm basically doing is i'm just coloring in the hinge you could Possibly put some washi tape across the back, maybe, if that's something you prefer. Though taking it in and out of the tub, you may or may not end up um, hitting the washi tape and it could peel off. You could do this in a proper funky colour. Maybe nail varnish, though that would you could potentially put on the outside. So... What it is, is the hinges are now coloured in. So now when you go to do your paintings, you're not going to end up getting Sharpie on you, which you can remove, but you're not going to end up getting Sharpie on you every time you go to open it, which is why I wouldn't recommend doing the front lip. Um, just because, you know, us diamond painters can be in and out of diamonds if we have confetti. But by putting it in the hinge, doesn't get in the way at all. And then you would know straight off whether all your containers are lined up the same way. So I think I'm gonna do this on quite a few of mine. I'm not gonna do them all on the video, but all I'm doing is I'm taking a Sharpie pen, which is a permanent marker, and I'm just colouring in the hinge. In fact, let me see if I can zoom in. This is a tips and tricks. Let's let's do it in full glory. I do have a rogue diamond in there. Maybe it'll help the camera to focus. But I'm just colouring in the hinge. I'm not even particularly being pretty. To be honest, this probably isn't the best colouring in. Maybe I should give this to a child to do. They'd probably do it better than me. But there is a couple of little ridges in the plastic and colour in the main, which means they're on the inside, so they're not going to get scratched on the outside every time I put them in and out of my storage. But I end up with little lined up in a row. And as long as all your pots are lined up in a row before you start, you know that you can put your stickers on because this one should be this way because it's one of the ones that I turned round before and just colour it in and you could just, you know, while away a few minutes doing some very bad colouring in or some very neat depending on on how you are you could get a funky colour nail polish and pop that inside though you might need to leave them open while it dries nail polish is a little bit thicker than a sharpie but a sharpie is handy and then every time you go to get your storage out, you don't end up making those mistakes that I've made. And we all know who's watched for a while that I've definitely done it on camera at least once. I know I have. I've probably done it in real life more than that because I never used to kit up every painting, but now I do. And I actually quite like the look of that compared to just your normal. It's not unsightly. So that is our tip and trick number one. Uh, we're up to tip and trick number two. 
um, for helping you with your diamond painting. Now, this tip is not mine originally. It's not something I thought of. I don't know who did come up with it originally, but I have heard it about. And it is in relation to trays. So there are many trays that you can get. We've got the green boat that comes with many kits. We've got the white tray with a spout. Some of them come with, some of them without, so that one doesn't have a spout. Clear one that comes with some kits. You can get big ones, or you can get the likes of 3D printed ones, like the ones that we sell in our shop. Now, some people like to be able to um, get their diamonds ready to go back into a pot. So for example, if you pop in however many diamonds it may be, pop them into your tray, get them all straight, do your diamond dotting, your dib dabbing um, to fill in the section. But then when you're done, you want to be able to sort of tip them all down, take out the stopper, which is what I do in these trays, if I can get the stopper to come out properly, um, and then tip them back into the pot. Now, the thing is with the likes of these big trays, or let's go for the trays with the kits, is if you tip diamonds into there, again, do your shake, your dot, 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 you sort of have to hold it over, Ooh, try not to drop the tray, to tip them all in. And some people like to be able to have the option of a stopper in one of these trays. And the genius idea that somebody came up with was using one of these squishies. So these often come with some kits, not with all, but they come with some to go over your standard pink pen to make it a little bit easier to grip. But what you can do is if you cut off one of the little bobbly sections, so you're cutting off one section, and then they used it to create themselves a mini stopper, which stopped the diamonds shooting out the end. So this can be especially useful if you like to have, say, trays with multiple colours so that you can flip between them. And then you can always choose to either have them go down a bit before you use maybe a pair of tweezers or your hands to take them out, whichever works. Um, some people just like to do it so that when they're moving their tray about, you know, if, they're, if they are doing multi, for example, you may pull a tray over, put a few diamonds on, move the tray out the way. It can stop any of those diamonds escaping out of the end and it's quite simple and easy to do and it just pulls out it even goes back to being a little circle so you could store them on your pen they'll also fit in these clear types of trays as well so if you want to create yourself a little stopper for the standard type of tray then just take a pen squashy and cut yourself off some little sections and you can create yourself a stopper. Let's see how it works with the big tray as well. It doesn't work quite the same as some of the printed ones, but it will stop some escapee diamonds. You're probably better on the big tray putting it upright rather than sideways, or maybe using a two or a three section so that you've got something to grip to take it out, but it'll still give you a nice amount in the end. And then you've got cute little ones in there. So it doesn't work with the green only because they don't have that part. So you won't have the same problem with them. But I hope this is helpful to some people that like to use the little trays, but want something to stop any diamonds potentially escaping um, off the end of the tray. Tip number three today. Um, so this is my little tips and tricks series. I'm hoping that we get up to 100. 
we'll see how we go. Um, you may find that there'll be some tips and tricks that I've mentioned before. Some of them will be new to you, but hopefully this will be a nice, quick reference for you. Um, but today's tip and trick is one that I've actually only found out quite recently, and you may have seen me use them on a, on a whipping chat. But many people now are liking to use an easel because it helps with the neck and shoulder ache and stuff. So you can have um, a diamond painting at an angle that stops you stooping as much. But whether you use an easel or not, you may well use a light pad. Now, if I was doing the bottom section of this painting, I'd be perfectly fine just popping the painting down on the light pad. Come to do the top part of the painting and, you know, if I'm not there to stop it, it just keeps falling. So this was something that was mentioned to me by a subscriber, is there's these little things called quilt clips. Now, I did used to just use the likes of a binder clip, a bigger one than this, but I used a binder clip. Now, the only thing is with the binder clips is they have angles on both sides. So it did tend to lift up my easel a little bit and potentially could scratch my easel and stuff. These quilt clips are a game changer. Now, they are small. My light pad is a wireless one from, um, who are we on? Hawaiian? I don't know. I don't know how they pronounce it, but it is quite a thick one compared to most light pads. So if you have a thinner light pad, you know, this will still work even better for you. Um, but even on the thick light pad, if I put my painting at the top and use the clip, considering how small that clip is, it stays there. And if I pop one the other side as well, now the benefit is the back is flat. Yes, it does have a little bit for the actual edge of the clip, but in general, it will lie flat and let you move it about. But it takes a lot to pull that off. Um, it takes even more with a small light pad. In fact, it's it wasn't even on the canvas, it was on the clear plastic. I put it on the canvas and pull that took quite a lot of pulling. You sort of have to believe me, it's hard on video. Um, it takes quite a lot of pulling to get it off. Now I have used these, these clips with a 50 by 40 by 50, where I'm clipping it because I'm working on the top and all the bottom has diamonds on it. So it's pretty chunky on the bottom. It's a lot heavier than than a painting you've not yet worked on. I did put three on only because of the length because it did hang over the side. So I did use three of these little clips and you can get some bigger, but I must say, I don't wanna use anything else now to hold the painting. It has some really good grip. Um, it doesn't matter when you're working on it do you know what I mean? So you're working on it, if you were sliding a diamond about because it went in the wrong place, it will still keep hold. And they tend to come in a, in a lot of packs. So this is 50 piece, multi-purpose, and then it says SE dot 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 hanging little things. <laughs> Which I think is quite cute, that's what it says on the label. Um, I will pop a link to them on the website, so the, the link's down. The details are down here, admorezest.com. I will put a link in the Our Favourites section under Tools, just so that you can either see what they look like or see the exact ones that I purchased. I've seen people purchase them in cute little tins and there's loads of different varieties available, but the link's there if you wanna know what you're looking for. But they're primarily called quilting clips and they're used by quilters, but oh, they're, they're so much better than those big bulky binder clips. They come in lots of funky colours. I tend to use the clear ones, but 
you could use whatever colour suits your mood or maybe what suits your painting. Uh, maybe I could, you know, choose to use orangey red ones for my fox painting. You can vary it up however you want. But yeah, that is tip and trick number three. Get yourself some quilting clips to help your diamond painting stay on your light pad. You can also use these if you, for example, if you had a very large diamond painting and you needed to roll it up. These are also quite small. I mean, I've, there, so quite small. Don't get too much in the way um, to be able to clip it up while you work on another section. Maybe you could do a bit of both. So maybe you need to clip it to your light pad, but you also don't want the remainder of the painting hanging down. Okay, we'll just send that one over there. Um, maybe you don't want the rest of your diamond painting hanging down while you're working on it. Depends on the size, of course. Um, but yeah. Enjoy these little quilting clips if you've not encountered them before. So for tip and trick number four, this one has been discussed a lot over our June Whip and Waffle. Um, but one of the, the sort of big things at the moment is using glue dots instead of wax in your pen. So you can get wax in pink, blue, sure there's other colours but the main ones tend to be this pink colour that you get in with your diamond painting pens and you find that you have to refill it quite a bit sometimes more than others it can depend on the heat it can depend on how hard you press down on your diamonds um, but you can often find that you fill it up you know the odd time while you're having a diamond painting session now Glue dots have become a recent thing to use in a diamond painting pen and it doesn't need refilling anywhere near as much as the wax. So I have been having a little, you know, bit of a, a try and test with a few. So I primarily use these everlasting tips, though these glue dots do work in any, but I used two micro glue dots so these are three mils in width I popped two in the pen and it lasted for ages now what I did find with these tips is you know the, the wax can sort of push down and you know it, it compacts itself a bit more with the action of, of putting the diamonds down so I did find that while two micro glue dots worked for quite a while I did then find it wasn't picking the diamonds up and that wasn't because it wasn't sticky it was because it had sunk too far into sort of the pen tip um, now these do have um, a stop have I got one of them that's yeah so I have one here I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see but inside there it does stop at a certain place it's not like it can go all the way to the bottom of the tip um, it is only a small amount but I did find that they compact it I now have four of the micro glue dots in here and it's at a really nice place at the moment to be able to pick diamonds up I've been using this pen I started using it at the beginning of doing a 30 no, a 40 by 50 diamond painting. I haven't quite finished it yet, but I'm still going on the same glue dots. Now, yes, I have put extra ones in the top, so that may make a little bit of a difference, but that was more because they went too far into the pen because of compacting down, more than they were losing their sticky. So that's what I've done with that one. With this one, I have just, and that is just before this camera, I have put in a mini glue dot. Now these are five mils in diameter, um, or three sixteenths of an inch. And that one at the moment is showing as sort of sticking out a little bit. Um, it will push down, but then it does 
pop itself back out. So I'm thinking that is probably more the amount that you'd need, you know, if you if you let it compact itself down further, that would probably be a pretty decent size for this type tip. Now there are a few different ways that you can put them in to the tip. So what I did do, which ones are these? Oh, they're the micro. No, I wanted the mini. So I'm going to try the mini. So there's a couple of different ways. Let me find, where's my bowl? There we go. There we are. So what you can do is if you wrap it over the top of, of your finger, say, and hold it, is you can start it going into the tip and then just keep twisting, twisting and pushing, and it will actually sort of twist itself inside the pen tip. And then you may just need to move it up a bit and push it down a bit just to get those bits from around the edges. And that's how I did it to sort of get the tip so that it was sticking out a little bit. Um, what you can also do, if I grab another one, because I have been busy taking wax out of, out of my pen tips, um, some people did say that if you take the wax out, um, that it doesn't stick as well, but I've not found that, especially not with these everlasting tips. As long as you get all the wax out, it's been fine. So what some other people do is take the glue dot off and sort of roll it in on itself and then pop it into the tip. So you don't tend to get as much around the sides, but that doesn't fill the tip as much. I'm not sure if you can eve if it will even focus or you can see, but there are gaps around that glue dot. Now, whether that is because you know it's not compacted as much, let me see if I can get another one off. And I'm still using the mini glue dots on this to give it a go. Let's try putting that into a ball, more of a ball than a and then that doesn't seem to want to drop in as much, but it is filling a little bit of the gaps. And that seems to have taken two to get to the same point. Now, it may be the way that I've been putting them in because I've been, you know, pushing them in and letting it twist. Maybe that's why I only fit two in this originally. And then as it's compacted, I've just topped it up on the top. Maybe that's the way it's the reason it's gone that way um, but they both look pretty much the same now and they've both just been twisted in this one looks a little bit lower this one's got a micro tip in um, so yeah you can use the mini what somebody else has done is they've sort of put in you know so that it does stick out like this and then they've just used a pair of sharp scissors or a knife and just chop the glue dot off on the end to give it a flat tip. So you could do that, pop it in and then just chop any excess off and get rid. And then we have the micro glue dot. So the micro, you do tend to need more. Let me try this in a normal tip um, because I think these will take less. The normal sort of brass tips are likely to take less of a dot than the others are. Yeah, because that has sort of filled that up fully now for me. I would start working with that. And then I think it would potentially sink down a bit more and I'd need to put more in. Let's also try taking one off. This is where it's trying to get hold of it. Because they are small and they do like to stick to your finger. And then try pushing it in. And that, to me now, that just keeps coming in and out of the pen. Where did it go? There it is. That is just coming in and out of the pen tip. And I'm going to need loads more. Because... I've, I've rolled it up rather than letting it sit on the top of the pen. So let me try doing it 
yeah so if I do it the way I did it before which is by getting hold of the glue dot itself let's use this one and sort of letting it catch on the end of the pen and sort of twisting it in twisting and pushing it in then you seem to get a little bit of a better finish on the end though you get a more compact if you roll it up now some people will roll them up into a ball and they'll put it in and they'll let it get right to the bottom and then they'll put more in i don't think the, there is you know one way that is the right way to do it and i don't think there's one that's the wrong way to do it i think the difference is if you do it by twisting the pen tip on the glue dot your glue dot is more sat on the top it's not down into the depths i mean say depths you're talking millimeters it's not down into the depths of your pen tip so you may find that you do need to top it up now bear in mind when i say top it up it's not like wax and you have to do it you know every few minutes i found that i didn't have to top mine up until i was probably a quarter of the way through my 40 by 50 so i'd done a strip that was 10 centimeters by 40 centimeters before i needed to put that extra one in because it had sunk too much and then i got another i, I probably got half of it done um or three quarters of it done sorry an additional half of it about three quarters of it done before I had to put that fourth one in and then I, I doubt I'll have to put one in before the painting finishes the only thing I do have found is that the glue dots can be quite sticky so they can be it can be at the point where they're a little bit stickier than the diamond you're putting down so you find that your, your pen just pulls the diamond back off again. If that's the case, what you need to do is get the likes of an item of clothing and just dab your glue dot on it. And you will find that your glue dot doesn't feel sticky anymore. But believe me, it still is. If you then go to try it on a diamond, um, it is still sticky. See, that one's sticking out too much. I quite like the idea of the overfill and then the chopping the excess off and going from there so maybe what I might do because I've got both is I might fill them up with mini dots but if I find that they can pack down and I need a bit more in it then I'll use a micro dot to top it up um, they didn't cost too much to be honest each of these I just picked them off off Amazon they were three or four pounds each um, but yeah, you do need to make it lose a little bit of the sticky. So an item of clothing is the best thing just because quite often you're wearing them. So you can just hit yourself with your pen for a bit and then go along diamond painting. If you find that the glue is sticking to the diamond, again, just pop it on your clothes, a couple of dabs on your top and off you go again. Um, and I find it takes... I don't want to give it a time frame because I know I do time and paint quite quickly but I do find that once I first topped it up with the glue dots it does take a little bit and a little bit of dabbing it on my clothes and going back to diamond painting to sort of prime the glue dot to its best and then once it's primed it's amazing how long you get without having to refill it and it will keep going for ages like you even forget that you need that you may need to fill them up what you can also do if you do find that you've got one you know that's filled up quite nicely it, it's full and all of a sudden it's sort of losing a bit of its sticky is you can use a pair of tweezers to sort of take out the glue dot let me find a pair of tweezers so a bit like you would if you decided to take out your wax and refill it is do the same with your glue dot is take it out but rather than refilling it is is pop it back in so just squeeze your glue dot back in in a different angle 
prime it on your clothes again, off you go. And your glue dart will last, I say. I've not had to change one yet for a new one. And I've nearly finished a, a 40 by 50 that's, that's used a glue dot the whole way through. I'll let you know if it becomes something that's a problem. But I do think I am going to be, slowly but surely, changing all my pens with all my multiple different types of tips into ones with glue dots. Because, gone, because not only were you having to dip into the wax quite often to refill, but then you would end up losing bits on the painting that you'd have to brush off. I don't tend to find that with glue dots. So if it's something you can do, I do recommend you give it a go. Um, which ones you get is completely up to you. I like the idea of starting with mini dots and maybe moving to micro dots. But micro dots will do it on its own as well. Um, and there are many things that work for different people, which I'm sure they'll pop in the comments down below. Um, and you can pick and choose what things work for you. But don't give up on glue dots too early if you've tried them. They do take a little bit to prime, which you can do while you're diamond painting. So by just dabbing it on your clothes if they get a bit too sticky. But once you've got that sweet spot, where you know you're popping the diamonds down and they come off and stick onto the canvas that's it then you will have that sweet spot for a good long time or well, long time diamond painting wise before you need to change things up again so it is just worth that two three minutes maybe of diamonds seeming to get a little bit more stuck it's so worth it for you know, the amount of time that you're not having to fill up your pen. And they're cheap enough, so why not? Anyway, that's enough waffling about glue dots. And today we're gonna to talk about options um, for the preparation or midst of doing of a diamond painting. So you'll find that many diamond paintings, some will come with an opaque cover, some will come with a clear cover. But quite often, and it's rare that this doesn't happen, but quite often you will find that there is an overhang of glue past the diamond painting. So, for example, on this one, we have, of course, the glue on the diamond painting. And I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up, but we do have an overhang of glue here on the white, which we don't need to be sticky. For diamonds to stick to. Now with the clear glue, with the clear cover it tends to be a poured glue so it's not something that you can peel up. Sometimes with a double-sided tape you can trim it with a craft knife and peel that tape off but it's not the same with a clear and sometimes with the double-sided tape option it doesn't work very well either or frankly it can just be can be a little bit messy. So there are a few different ways that you can use to cover this up. Many people like to use the likes of washi tape. Now washi tape is some form of like paper tape with a very low tap. It's, it's basically like masking tape. It's just prettier. It's often thinner as well than masking tape. Um, you can get them quite a bit thinner than this though of course I find this sort of size which I think is about 15 mil or is it 10 mil is normally a nice size you know that will work for pretty much all diamond paintings and you can just place this down just up to the borderline of your painting and stick it down um, and of course you can then if you need to, you can peel it back up. You can feel it getting a bit tougher to peel back up where the poured glue is. But if you were to just use a piece of it on the normal, it lifts up really easy because there's no glue there to help stick it down. So that's one option you can use is some form of masking tape, of washi tape. You can get it from quite a few places now cheap. It's used in planners and 
for scrapbooking and things like that. So it, it's becoming quite popular. And that will stop this bit from being sticky. Of course, you need to make sure that your rest, where your diamonds go, do stay sticky. One of the other things you may want to do, or even a combination of, especially if you do use the legend on the diamond painting. So quite often, I won't look at this legend once I've kitted a diamond painting up, but some people do, and that's fine. So in that instance, just use some normal tape, which of course I can't find the end for because I'm on camera. There we go. So you can just use some normal sticky tape. It will, of course, be clear, which means you can still see your legend, but it will stick over the top of the glue that's overhanging. I need some scissors to cut this one, probably. It doesn't rip the same, so I'm gonna use scissors to cut that. If you've got it handy, that then stops that being sticky, but also still allows you to see your numbers and your legend. The only difference is because sticky tape is more sticky than masking tape or washi tape, is you may find that if you choose to peel that off later, you have a little bit more of a sticky residue. I tend to find with, uh, sorry, I hope it just brought me in a break. Um, so yeah, the only thing with sticky tape is, of course, when you do pull it up, it may leave a bit of a residue. Um, more so than masking tape or washi tape will. So let's give this masking tape a go. Now I do have posh stuff, I don't always have posh stuff. Um, we just got the posher stuff when we were doing a bulk lot of painting in the conservatory. But normally I just have the, the yellow stuff, but this is frog painter's tape. So you can just stick that down if you don't have, you know, washi tape in the house, don't want to spend money on washing tape, but you have masking tape in the house, you can also use that. Pretty much most types of tape that you can find will work. I think the reason that I tend to sway towards washi tape is one, the roll tends to be smaller, so it fits in my cart so I have it near me quite sometimes I will put the, the washi tape on before I do a diamond painting but more often than not I sort of do it as I go as I start working on a section and find that the glue's there and, and it's getting sticky that's when I'll be like oh where's my washi tape and I'll put a bit on across the bottom but this what this mainly does is it stops it picking up fluff it stops you picking up bits of fluff on the part that you're not doing, especially when you've done a section here and you're moving further up, maybe the arm, you know, if you close, your jumper just starts picking up bits and pieces. Um, but masking tape or washi tape is your best option if you want to be able to remove it afterwards it's probably the best option because it's lower tack um, and therefore it will allow you to peel it up again when you're done. So it gets a little bit stiffer where the glue is but you don't get any residue on your canvas here. But sellotape or tape should I say, sellotape's a brand name, sticky tape, <laughs> when you do use that it will leave a residue behind depending on, on the quality and the thickness of your tape. But it's absolutely perfect if you want to be able to see your legend. And to be honest, sellotape is quite pretty, or sticky tape is quite pretty, if you want to still be able to see the rest of your canvas. Um, some people have it in multiple colours, so they'll use a colour according to the canvas they're about to do, um, and, and work it that way. I tend to cut off round the edges as soon as I'm done anyway, so I tend to cut off the washi tape with it. But yeah, that is a little tip, Many, it's a more common known tip, so many of you may 
know about putting masking tape and or washi tape or sticky tape around the edge of your painting but for some new diamond painters um, it may not be as well known so it needs to be in the tips and tricks because if it doesn't come in your instruction booklet with diamond painting then it's a tip and a trick so yeah today's is various amounts of tape and today I've got a tip and trick number six for you today. Now, um, you know, uh, many of you may know some diamond paintings come with an opaque cover and some diamond paintings come with a clear cover. Now, if you have been one of those people that get a diamond painting with a clear cover, or many of them, some people like to keep the clear cover on. I, for one, personally, I prefer to take all the clear cover paper off and replace them with cover sheets. But that's just because I like to section it off and not see the rest. But many people do like to work with the clear cover. Sometimes even people that don't necessarily work with the clear cover may take the cover off. And I know I've definitely done this at least once. I don't know if anybody else has. But if you take the clear cover all the way off, you look at the painting, you decide to go put it back. What many people don't realise is that one side of the cover paper, of this type of cover paper, will go back on and peel back off quite nicely. The other side, not so much. It will stick on and it will come off, but you have to really pull it. So I'm really pulling that quite a bit to get the wrong side to come off. There is definitely one side of this that should be used more so than the other side. And of course, you end up with static and it's not stuck itself down right. So let me just get that a little bit straighter. It's not as straight as it was, but it's better. So if you do like to use this cover paper, this clear paper while you're working and move it up, or if you think at some point you may be trying, taking it off and may potentially need to put it back on, I do highly recommend that you make note of which side is which. So there's one easy way, um, I do this on all of my paintings, is I have a sticker that tells me the name of it, so this one's Sleeping Fox, it's a 30 by 40, it's from FG Normal and it's in round. Now I have a sticker with exactly the same information on it that is with the diamonds. So to me, that will automatically tell me this is the way, this is the face up way for the cover sheet. You can put any sort of sticker on here to let you know that. It could be a sticker off an apple. It could just be one of your round or square stickers um, from kitting up a painting. You can also use washi tape. So we did mention washi tape in the last tip and trick. Some people like to sort of mini section off their diamond painting with washi tape a bit like this you know say okay that section that section and they like to do it with their clear cover and then when they do peel it back they can sort of see where they're getting up to but I do recommend whichever way you want to do it that you do put some form of marking on the top section of your cover paper or your clear sheet something as small as a sticker or something as big as washi tape, I do recommend that you put something on it so that if for any reason you peel off the whole top sheet, you know which way to put it back. Because while I only did a little section upside down and it took me quite a bit to get it pulled off and back straight, I mean, not this way around, it's a lot quicker, even if I can't do it without crinkling it. Um, but while, when I turned it over, it was only a little section. 
Sometimes you can do it on a big section if you're not slow enough peeling it off or if the film quality on the top is not as nice a quality, is not as thick, it can rip and that can then cause you even more problems because it's hard to see, it's clear and it, it, it covers up your sticky. So that's my tip for today. If you are using clear covers and that whether they stay on there and there's a chance of you removing it or putting it back on, put a sticker on it. Any size sticker, any way, just one that you can tell which is face up and which is face down. So don't do a white sticker with a white back because white is white. Um, maybe you'll decide to label yours up, maybe not. But maybe just do one with your name on it. This is mine. Um, or something like that. Uh, but I do recommend doing something like that on each clear cover that you've got. And then that should save you from potentially making a mistake in the future and putting it on the wrong way around. Mistakes do still happen. Uh, but hopefully this little tip will help you not make this mistake anyway. Thank so for tip and trick number seven. Now for the last one we talked about marking up a clear cover sheet so that you stuck it down the right way etc. However if you're like me this is my well used tip and trick when it comes to a clear cover diamond painting is to take it off. I personally don't like working with clear cover sheets. I like the poured glue, but I don't like the cover sheet. There's one main reason for that. When it has a clear cover on and you can see all the symbols, I find myself chasing symbols up the canvas. So I'll have my diamonds in a tray and I'll be doing this section and then I'll be like, oh, there's just one up there. There's just a couple up there. And it ends up moving about and I don't get a complete section finished because I've sort of gone all over the place. Now, some people like that. Some people don't. I personally don't. I prefer to do a section and then move on to the next one. So this is what I use. These are cover sheets or release papers, they're also called. They're double sided, waxy on either side so that you can place them down either way. So you can place it that way or you can place it that way. They often, they come in a couple of different sizes or there's a few different sizes that you can get. This is the size that I sell in, in my shop, which website's there. Um, this is the size that I sell because this is a perfect size for me for working on a painting. And you can overlap them a bit you know, when you place them down. And I don't particularly place them down in any, you know, fancy way. All I do is cover the whole of the painting. I do it slightly different on larger paintings, but I will um, do that in another tip and trick. But for example, painting like this, because I know that the painting is likely to stay, you know, this size, I don't need to roll it up or anything like that to work on it because it's so small. I do it like this. And then I can take off that piece and work on that section. And I'm not seeing all the other symbols that are about. Um, these are reusable. So I actually store them in the likes of a passport holder. So once I've started doing that section I'll slip it in there I'll do that section then I'll move on to the next one and I'll pop it away in there so that they're ready for my next painting I can also then lift some up and straighten them up because of course when I first put them down I've not really paid attention and I'll keep going all the way until the painting's finished um, so yeah quite a I mean, many people use this this sort of tip in diamond painting. This is probably one that's there more for a beginner. But cover papers, release papers, 
parchment paper works as well. You're best getting double-sided non-stick because you wouldn't want to put it the wrong way up. A bit like you can do with the cover sheets. Um, you can't use, I think it's, there's another type of paper, I think it's baking paper. That doesn't work. It needs to be non-stick, um, preferably double-sided. The release papers I tend to find are the most reusable. Parchment paper you can use. I think it's a bit thinner, which is what means it won't give you as many life cycles, maybe as many cycles before it becomes out of, you know, no longer usable. But yeah, these are absolutely perfect for sectioning up a diamond painting. And the, the ones that I have, I'm quite happy the ones that I sell, I'm quite happy with that square being sort of, you know, a piece to work on. You can always section it off even more by overlapping them. So if you actually took off that full section and go, oh, actually, I've only got half an hour to do some diamond painting today, then just section it off even more. You still get to do a section and the rest is there waiting when you've got a bit more free time. So that's my tip for today. Ditch the clear cover completely. Um, make your own that suits. It will work on double-sided tape as well. You can use this on double-sided canvases, though they tend to come with some sort of paper over the top. So it's up to you whether you want to take that off and change it. Um, but yeah, one, four, seven. This is tip and tricks number eight. And this one is based around a light pad. So many people use a light pad for diamond painting. It's quite often one of the first sort of tools that you might decide to invest in if you are really enjoying diamond painting and want to keep up with it. And that is because it will light your canvas from underneath, which can make the symbols a lot easier to see, especially in an evening when it starts to go darker. Now, there are different versions of light pads. I do have a couple that are battery, so they charge, but then you can use them wirelessly. There are also some that have um, a power connector coming out of the side of your light pad that you then plug the power into. But the most common one that's out there is one that has the charger in the end. Now, these are extremely thin, as you can see. It's pretty much the depth of the charger. Now, I have lost two light pads due to this charging connector. One of them did last over a year, but it did eventually, because of taking the charging charger port in and out, it did eventually loosen over the course of about a year. I got a replacement, and then the second one, I don't think it even lasted a month. And that was because somebody tripped over the cable, which was plugged into my light pad, which yanked the cable and pulled out completely the little micro USB charging socket in the end. Following that, I looked into options for that a little bit more. And this is something that I came across and has been amazing since. It is a magnetic charger. Now, the one I got came with about five different pieces. I'm not sure where the other connectors are. They were all different ones. So it came with an iPhone connector, a lightning, lightning connector, came with this micro USB connector. I think it may have come with a micro connector as well. They are available on Amazon. You just need to look for a magnetic charging wire. You can get some that just come with with one tip, you can get some that come with multiples. The purpose is, for me, I only needed the micro USB. And you pop the micro USB into the charging socket. So all you have then on the end is this dome. And then you get your wire, which comes with USB one end, which of course goes into your plug. 
And then you just have a, a connector that just magnetically connects itself to your charging port and gives you power. However, if somebody pulls this or trips it, it just turns off and then you can pop it back. So it doesn't matter whether you knock it, one of the kids knocks it, which is what happened with me, <laughs> um, doesn't have the whole wear and tear. So when, when you finish for the evening, so quite often I'd have it on the table with my diamond painting, I'd be doing it and I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm done for the night. I'd just hit it like that. Because it disconnects and then reconnects, it would turn it off. So that would turn it off and then I would have to press the button to turn it back on. Um, you can also, of course, just take it off when you're done charging. You could get multiple charging tips. So you could move the charger from your light pad to your phone and use the same charger for multiple things. But this will save the life of your light pad and give you, you know, probably its full usage rather than um, having to replace due to damage because that is the main reason that a light pad like this built like this is likely to get damaged is the charging port more than it it's stopping working in any other way so have a nosy on amazon magnetic charger may even help with phones and stuff though phones a lot of phones have now gone to the type c charger which is a little bit it's a little bit stronger. The micro USB is quite a weak fitting um, in the way it is, but that is what most light pads are now. Some will go to type C, but if you want to extend the life of your light pad, get yourself a magnetic charger. It is a game changer. Uh, this is tip and trick number nine. Um, and this is to help especially if you're working with a large painting, but in a smaller space. So I have this painting here. What is the width of this one? Does it actually say on it? I cannot remember. It's a big one. Oh, I've got the box here. It is 186 centimetres by 51 centimetres. So this is really long. I mean, the worktop that I have for filming is quite long, but it still won't fit the whole thing flat. And I do actually work on this on my couch in front of the TV. Now, when I'm working on a painting, I like to have, you know, some way of compacting it a little bit. And you can just roll it up. You can just roll it up and let it, let it sit there rolled. You can also do the same on a section that you've finished. So this is part of what I've finished. And for when you've finished, you roll the diamond out. But when I'm working on it and I haven't yet done it, I tend to roll it the way it came. So in this case, it was rolled inwards. But one thing that can really help with that is the likes of something similar to pipe lagging. So this is something we have available in the UK. It comes with a slit and you just need to, you know, make it come apart. And it's used for going round pipes. So it's quite cheap from your local DIY store. You can also use pool noodles if pipe lagging isn't something that's readily available in your country, but you would have to create the slit yourself. And then what you do, is you thread it onto the end of your painting. So I tend to find this way is the easier way to do it, is to sort of thread it on and then push it up. But sometimes you can just tuck it in, but I tend to find this way sits a little bit better. You sometimes then have to tweak it a little bit, but the idea is to just get the end of your diamond painting inside the pipe and then use the pipe lagging to roll your painting and then you can then get it to a point where you can work on a section. For the other end I have actually just put a couple of little binder clips on the end 
just to stop it unrolling completely but I have done exactly the same thing there's a piece of pipe lagging on this end the difference is I roll this end outwards I do have a video on actually it's on this painting um, on working on a larger diamond painting and how I do it on an easel but I like to have hold of, of this pipe lagging for pretty much all of, of my paintings, even the ones that are finished. The reason I like them on the ones that, have, that I've finished is the weight of the diamonds can sometimes make basically the end of it squish because of the heavy diamonds. They will squash down and they will give you sort of a line. It's a line that will come out when you lay it flat, but it is there. It will give you sort of a crease. Whereas by putting in the pipe lagging, it doesn't, it's not able to crease. There's nowhere for it to go. So I highly recommend having hold of pipe lagging or pool noodles to put on either paintings you're working on or paintings you've completed, but aren't framed. Uh, get some pipe lagging or a pool noodle or something just to wrap your painting onto. You can also use the white stuff that some paintings come with, though that doesn't have a slot for you to slip the painting into to help it to grip, but it works just the same. A piece of foam in a roll to stop your painting going flat. So that is tip and trick number what were we on? Number nine. Hopefully that will help some of you, especially if you're working on a large painting. I say I do have a full video on it and I just roll it up this way and out this way as I go along until the painting is completed. And I've not found that there's any problems with the canvas due to the fact that it's staying rolled and it's not squashing with any weight. And I've got today for you tip and trick number 10. So this is in relation to when you are ready to kit up a painting, if that's something that you do. Um, and how I like to label up sort of pots when I don't have stickers to be able to, you know, cut out the little sections and I need to write labels. I tend to write them this way. Um, and I'll explain why as I do it. So let me just zoom in. So let's pretend I'm going to do this painting. So I have 16 different colours. I do have my little circle stickers. Um, they are circles, I'm not sure how easy that is coming out on camera, but they are little circles with diamonds on. But when I'm actually doing the painting, of course, what I'm interested in is the symbol. But when I am kitting up the painting, I need to know the DMC number. I also need to know that when I'm de-kitting because I put them away according to DMC number. So what I do when I create my labels is I will use, I tend to just go for a purple pen, basically a, a, a nice bold colour that you can see and I will use that to write out my symbols. Just checking how many are in frame. <laughs> so we'll go up to six there and I'll move on to another line just so that we can still see it all closely. Eight, and then we've got A, C, D, F. I know my daughter does this, but she does it in red. That's the colour that sort of jumps out to her. So I do the symbols in large because that's what I need to see for the chunk of time. The most amount of time I need to be able to see the numbers to be able to put the right colour on the right symbol. But then underneath smaller I will write the DMC number which means I can put all these ready on the pots so we to there. <laughs> um, I can put all the stickers ready on the pots. I can kit up by 
popping in the correct DMC numbers if there's DMC numbers on the packets. If it's just got the numbers 1 to 16 on the packet, then I can cross check it with the canvas before putting it in. But when I go to D kit and I'm using the DMC numbers to put my diamonds away, I've got them handy. I don't need to look at the canvas to do it. I always have the canvas with me when I'm kitting up. I get, I pick out the canvas, I'll pick out the diamonds that go with it. Um, and then I'll, you know, kit it all up, get my canvas all prepped and off I go. Whereas when I'm de-kitting, I might have already put the canvas away. I might have already framed the canvas before I put the diamonds away, all that sort of stuff. So I've got the labels for the pots with the DMC numbers. I don't need the canvas. All I need is the diamonds that are left over. Now I know some people do like to label one to 16 and they will just use those over and over again for every painting that they do because they'll look at this color list. However, I don't want to have to look up each time. So I don't want to have to go, oh, okay, K, okay. oh, it's number 16 and get out number 16. I want to look at the symbol K find the symbol K and do it that way. So that's a good way to label up your pots if that's something, you know, if you need to. And then you've got a little sticker, which it's not focusing on, of course, because I've just shoved it right in its face. Um, but I have a little sticker with the, with the DMC code on in small, with my symbol on in large, ready to go with the painting and deal, you know, I can just use that for anything then on. So that's my little tip and trick for today is to create yourself some labels um, that make sense for how you work. Nice and bold for your symbol, but just make sure your DMC number's there for when you de-kit later on.